Hello and many thanks for joining us in News on the Hour on Plus TV Africa. Here are some of the stories making the headlines. The Federal High Court in Abuja on Thursday ordered the permanent forfeiture of some assets returned by suspects linked to the suspended head of service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita. Details of the case were not read out in the open court when Justice Falashade Oguban Jogiwa made the order of final forfeiture of the monetary assets to the federal government. She was placed on an indefinite suspension over corruption allegations launched against her by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Moving the application on Thursday, the EFCC lawyer, MS Abubakar, said the funds were voluntarily returned to the commission as proceeds of crime. He reminded the court that it had on June 28, 2019, granted an ex parte application ordering the interim forfeiture of the assets, saying as of Thursday, no one had filed an application to challenge the interim order despite that it had been served on the suspect. He therefore urged the court to grant a permanent order of forfeiture of the assets. He informed the judge that the money had been paid into an account with the Central Bank of Nigeria. As soon as it was returned by the suspect, the judge went on to make the order of final forfeiture of the assets. Now, the Department of State Services, DSS, has twice on Friday blocked a belief of the Federal High Court in Abuja from effecting a fresh service of the court order for the release of the convener of Revolution Now protest, Omoyele Showere. It was learned that the bailiff first arrived at DSS headquarters in Abuja, where Showere had been held since August 3, 2019, around 9.30 a.m. on Friday, but was asked to return by noon when the Director General of DSS, Yusuf Bichi, would be around. But it was learned that the bailiff returned to the DSS headquarters at 12.14 p.m. on Friday, but was denied access. One of Shore's lawyers, Sam Ogala, who was at the main gate of the DSS office during the bailiff's attempt to serve the security agency, confirmed the development. Shore's legal team, led by Femi Falano, had on Thursday expressed shock over DSS's claim that it had not been served with the order issued by Justice Taiwo Taiwo of the Federal High Court in Abuja granting bail. And Thursday, after DSS spokesperson denied that the agency had been served with a court order, Femi Falana said Ayuba Adam of the legal department of the DSS received the court order on behalf of the agency in September 24. The DSS denial came after news broke that Shore's legal team had commenced a contempt suit against the DSS boss for failing to comply with the court order for Shore's release. Now, the federal government is set to reconstitute a new committee to begin fresh negotiations for the full implementation of the new national minimum wage of 30,000 naira. Minister of Labor and Employment, Senator Chris Ngege, disclosed this on Thursday in Abuja, the federal capital territory. Senator Nkige made the revelation when the leadership of the Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, paid him a courtesy visit at his office in the nation's capital. He, however, warned that a delay in agreement for the full implementation of the new minimum wage may put the federal and state governments in a difficult position to pay because of the backlog that would arise. The minister explained that it was important for workers earning above 30,000 naira on, on grade levels 7 to 17 to be patient. He gave assurance that the consequential adjustment of the minimum wage implementation would be sorted out. Meanwhile, civil servants in Kaduna State on Friday commanded Governor Nasser El Rufai for paying the 30,000 naira minimum wage as promised. The governor had in a statement in August signed by his special advisor on media and communications, Muiwa Adeke, promised to pay the 30,000 naira national minimum wage in September. Similarly, the Trade Union Congress Kaduna State Council also joined workers in commending the governor for implementing the minimum wage as promised. The union, in a letter of appreciation to the governor signed by the council's chairman, Shehu Mohammed, described the development as commendable, considering that the federal government was yet to fully implement the national minimum wage. The union promised to support the El Rufai-led administration to move Kaduna to greater heights by assuring that the productivity of the workforce is improved. Away from that, President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, on Friday 
underscored the need to have a budget reform that will include a law on timeline in budget passing. He made the call at business meeting of the Institute of Directors annual conference in Abuja. He spoke and performed on reforming the budget cycle, a first step in our journey to the next level. He said timelines and deadlines would give leaders focus and make for more definite on deliverables. According to him, reports indicate that countries like the US, Canada, Australia, Brazil, France and India have more definite budget cycles through legislation. The president of the Senate said it is important to improve on database showing the social economic conditions of the country. He added that a database will be more helpful for the appreciation of financial projections despite current efforts by the National Bureau of Statistics and some multilateral agencies in showing sectoral performances of the economy. He called for the amendment of the Public Procurement Act 2007, noting that the act has not provided the intended efficacy it should produce. To party matters now, the All Progressive Congress APC and its governors have dismissed recent allegations of a cold war within the presidency as mere rumor and another scheme of opposition mischief makers. There have been media reports and allegations in the political space of a festering sore relationship between President Muhammad Bukhari and Vice President Yami Oshibaju in the last few days, indicating that handlers of the president had demanded the resignation of the vice president. However, during separate media engagements in Abuja on Thursday, the Progressive Governors Forum and the National Secretariat of the ruling APC dismissed the insinuation, stating that more recent events had prov proven such as invalid claims. Speaking during the inauguration of the Progressive Governors Forum PGF, Steering Committee on Media and Communication, Lagos Governor, who is also the chairman of the committee, Babaji De Sowulu, said the alleged face-off in the presidency was just gossip. The governor, who was represented by his deputy, Obafemi Hamzat, explained that the Buhari of Shibajo administration has carried on with its normal duties in the last few days despite the alleged bad blood. Efforts to improve on crime prevention take center stage in Abuja as the Nigerian police force receives training on the provisions of the administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015. The training organized by Clean Foundation in Abuja is expected to be a train-the-trainers training aimed at improving adherence to human rights of suspects, improving conditions of arrest and detention of alleged criminals. Speedy dispensation of justice for Nigerians and the improvement of Nigeria's criminal justice system to be at par with the international community. It's to uh, ensure that uh, the Nigerian police force, who are the DTBRs in terms of uh, protection of uh, um, citizens and maintenance of law and order, are abreast of, of, of uh, this Administration of Criminal Justice Act um, that was passed in 2015 and has also been replicated in about 26 states of the Federation. Um, the act of policing is not a, a day business, it's a continuous process. So it's important that we engage them continuously uh, on the tools they use and also on issues that border on human rights and the rights of individuals, whether they are accused persons, whether they are suspects, um, whether they are already in court. So the Administration of Criminal Justice Act um, deals with the rights and, 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 and privileges, if you can call it, of individuals um, who have been accused of crime. Of course, you know that the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria states clearly that you are innocent until proven guilty. So whether you are arrested, whether you are in detention, whether you are in police custody, there are rights, inalienable rights, that the Constitution has given to you. So, and the procedure of taking somebody to court, the procedure of taking statements, um, how to um, interrogate a suspect, um, the law makes provisions for most of these issues. Aja has come to stay the way it is, and with what is going to be imparted on the police officers who have come here, they are going to cascade it into our other colleagues in the zonal and state commands. Because where there's no knowledge about a procedure, then they are bound to the problems. So with the knowledge they're going to gain here, added to what they already know about the Aja, it will now be a functional 
knowledge which will enlarge their capacities, their capabilities, and it will also enhance the overall police service delivery. Because as you know, the Nigerian police is principally and fundamentally the gatekeeper of the criminal justice environment. This training is coming up in uh, line with um, the police reforms program because um, we are trying to adjust our operations to meet the present day um, you know, contemporary time. So the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, like you know, is a novel law that has brought together the CPA and the CPC, that's the North and the South, the Penal and the Criminal Codes, and um, have addressed issues where we had clogs in the wheel of criminal justice. And um, so we are trying to see how we can bring our men to speed, to see the new provisions and what needs to be done away with, and how to go about doing things the new way, so that um, we can meet up with the, what the contemporary society requires. It's time to take a quick break. Stay tuned for more news when we return. Egypt's president told supporters not to worry about calls for further protests against his rule on Friday as security forces tightened control in the center of the capital and closed off entrance to Tahrir Square. Protests broke out in September 20 in Cairo and other cities following online calls for demonstrations against alleged corruption by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and the military. Sissi, who has been in New York for the past week attending the United Nations General Assembly, returns to Cairo on Friday morning, where he was greeted by religious dignitaries and a crowd of supporters. Since last weekend's protests, authorities have carried out a campaign of mass arrest, which rights monitors say has seen at least 1,900 people detained. I'll bring you foreign news after this very short break. Just stay with us. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi on Friday accused U.S. Attorney General William Barr of going rogue in the Justice Department's handling of a whistleblower report that President Donald Trump solicited a political favor from Ukraine's president that could help him get re-elected. The Democratic House leader, who launched an impeachment inquiry on Tuesday against the Republican Trump, has accused the administration of trying to cover up the whistleblower complaint. Democrats have criticized Barr for not recusing himself from the matter related to the whistleblower complaint prompted by a July 25 call between Trump and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. According to a summary of the call released by the White House, President Trump asked President Zelensky to work with Barr and his personal lawyer, who was pressing the Ukrainians to investigate matters related to former Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter. Hunter Biden served on the board of a Ukrainian gas company when Biden was in office. Now, millions of Afghans are expected to brave the threat of militant attacks to vote in the presidential election on Saturday, hoping to prevent a repeat of a bitter fraud mud and ultimately unresolved poll in 2014. About a dozen candidates are in the fray for the presidency, but the incumbent president, Ashraf Ghani, and his ex chief executive, Abdullah Abdullah, are the top contenders for the job at a time when Taliban insurgents have intensified attacks. The 70-year-old Ghani and Abdullah, who is 59, have ruled through a fractured power-sharing arrangement since 2014. They are forces fighting against the Taliban even as the rebels held peace talks with the United States that were later abandoned. We'll bring you business news after we go on the short break. Oil prices were steady on Friday but headed for a weekly loss, weighed down by slowing Chinese economic growth. Brent crude fell $0.06 cents to $62.60. 
eight cents a barrel, while U.S. crude rose eighteen cents to fifty-six dollars and fifty-nine cents a barrel. However, both were down two point six percent on a weekly basis. Brent is on its highest and biggest weekly loss in seven weeks, just above its level before September 14th attack on Saudi facilities that initially halted the kingdom's production. Sources told Reuters this week that Saudi Arabia had restored capacity to 11.3 billion million barrels per day. However, Saudi Aramco has yet to confirm it is fully back online. Meanwhile, a, bleach, a British flagged oil tanker is leaving Iran after being held for more than two months. The Stan Imperial's Swedish owner, Sten Bok, said it was on the move from the Bandar Addis from the Bandar Abbas port where it had been anchored since July. The vessel was seized by Iranian troops in the Straits of Hummus after they accused it of breaking maritime rules. Officials say it left for international waters at nine local time on Friday morning. Meanwhile, Eric Hanel, CEO of Stenabok, said the vessel would head to Dubai where the crew would be debriefed and receive medical checks. Still ahead on Plus TV African News is our roundup on entertainment and sports. We'll be back in a moment. And in entertainment, Nigerian singer David Adeleke, popularly known as David O, has announced a new song with American rhythm and blues singer and actor Chris Brown next week. The music star announced the release of his second song with Chris Brown on September 26 to be produced by Key Dominant through his Twitter page. The song would, however, be second major song collaboration between David O and Chris Brown, Blow My Mind song collaboration with it has over 21 million views on YouTube, produced by Shinzi and co-written by Wald. Both singers have been a team. A few days ago, Davido was in Washington, District of Columbia, U.S., with Chris Brown on additional Indie Goat tour. And that's it on entertainment. Sports news comes on after this break. Stay with us. And in sports, FIFA have come out to clear the air and also give reasons why some of Mo Salah's votes for the FIFA the Best Player Award was not counted. And the football governing body said that during, during the monitoring of the votes com submitted by the Egyptian Fo Football Association, that's the EFA, on the 15th of August, it was remarked that the signatures on the voting forms were in capital letters and thus seemed not valid, not authentic. And the voting forms were also not signed by the General Secretary, which is mandatory. And FIFA added that the President's Office of the EFA, which has undergone recent structural changes, was contacted about the issue, with no response received in time for the votes to count. And further questions have been asked of FIFA about the voting process of the best awards. Well, I've got uh, Ifreke Inyang on the sports news today, and uh, he's a sports editor and a new media enthusiast, and we'll be talking about the Mo Salah incident uh, together. Welcome, and uh, um, good to have you here. Thanks for having me here. Now, um, the Mo Salah issue has been trending on social media on all platforms, and it looks like it's something that we surely need to talk about. Now, what is your take on the incident so far, and um, is it that Mo Salah do, do, does Mosala deserve to be a part of the top three of uh, the best awards, which has just ended? Um, that, that's debatable. It depends on who you ask, but I do not think so. I still mm -hmm. think the top three should be between um, Messi, Ronaldo, and Van Dijk in whatever mm -hmm. order. But um, obviously, Salah being a selfish player, which has manufactured in a lot of play mm -hmm. this season, is itching to be you know, in that top bracket and has instigated this whole thing, which has actually now dug up a lot of discrepancies from his FA, as he's yeah. saying, you know, like sending the document with signature in capital letters mm -hmm. and all of that, and then it wasn't signed by the general secretary. So, um, as it is now, he doesn't even have a case, but that has shown that next time, if you're sending these documents to FIFA, you have to time apply certain rules you know before you get the documents across mm. them now you know there was a time he also said he, he was on the verge of quitting the national team because of the case issues that he had with the efa that's the egypt football uh, federation uh, do you think that this will also um 
prompt him to quit the, interna uh, the, national, the national team because of the whole, he calls it crisis, but he has put up a post on Twitter um, also debunking that he's not quitting um, the national team. But do you think this can actually lead uh, to that point? It shouldn't lead to it because, I mean, the, the whole thing is now out in the open. It's mm. black and white, and we see where the problem you know, came from, and then you should understand. Then next season, you should work hard with Liverpool and mm. see what can happen next season. Mm. You know, it might be in the top bracket. All right, I've been in the top bracket, and Mo Salah still plays for Liverpool Football Club right there in England, and he also plays for the Egypt national team. We're looking forward to his next game uh, this weekend, and hoping that he can actually see Liverpool get up to a more three pointer to ensure that they keep climbing up the table. They are top of the EPL table at the moment, and uh, we're looking forward to the next game that's this weekend. Now let's talk about um, Tammy Abraham. That's on the side now. Um, it's also trained uh, that uh, he. Is on the verge of dumping Nigeria for the Three Lions of England. Nigerians are asking for him to come play for the country. Ganora didn't invite him to come play this friendly match against Brazil because he said that there's no point inviting Tammy Abraham and uh, um, the other one who plays uh, for Chelsea. Chelsea. I'm trying to, try, trying to remember. Tomori. Tomori, yeah. Tomori, the defender who plays for Chelsea. Uh, he couldn't invite both of them to play against Brazil. But do we really need a Tammy Abraham to feature for the Super Eagles? Tammy Brown specifically, I don't think we really need him because um, he's not a very physical striker. Mm. You know, a typical African striker. Mm. You know, I think we should um, do a lot of work on the team and begin to, you know, make him like the point man, the mm. new point man. Of, we see what he has done with, in, in Lille. Lille yeah. Yeah, and you can't convince me otherwise that if Osimhen was playing in Chelsea and was given this playing minutes under Lampard, he would not do as much as Tamir Bram is doing. Mm. I think um, Osuna is better suited to African football and to the spy goals than Tamir Bram. In the long run, Tamir Bram is going to go down the route of many um, black people, or mm. as, it, as it were, that are chosen to play for England. And you get a game or two, and the next thing in your history, you can ask Gabriel Agbola where he is exactly. today. Very true. You can ask uh, Gabriel Agbalao where he is today. And the only one we, we mentioned earlier uh, was about uh, Dele Ali, who still features for the three Lions. But at the moment, he's not really getting enough playing time. But I'm sure he has uh, quality enough to feature for that team. So, Tamir Abraham, you've, you've heard it all. And uh, Nigerians are looking forward to you playing for Nigeria. So, you have to make up your mind to know exactly what you want and where you want to play your football. Thank you, Freke, for making it down here. Thank you for having me here. All right, uh, that's the best we can take on Sports Update on Plus TV Africa. I'm Doka Njok. And that's our news roundup of events at this hour. For more news updates, please follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel that is also at Plus TV Africa. We'll be back later with more stories making the headlines. Do please join us again. Thank you for watching.